don't stay there. We're not going to stay there. We're not going to stay in the cry. We're not going to stay in the the overwhelm because there's so many people who depend on us and there's so many people who depend on you. Um, there's so many people who depend on all of those amazing first responders and, and our politicians and our medical workers. Welcome to the podcast with Kylie Nichols. I'm Kylie, founder and CEO of the life-changing accessories brand Nickel and & Suede and the successful style blog One Little Mama. I made the unlikely transition from stay-at-home mom to founder and entrepreneur. It takes a lot of courage to make a change like that, but I love the growth and the confidence that's come from stepping out of my comfort zone. This is the podcast for people who want to be inspired to be brave, to take a chance, and to change their life. I'll be sharing stories and actionable takeaways about working with your spouse, being a working mom, starting and growing a business, confidence, motivation, and more. So get ready to get inspired and to get started with Kylie Nichols. Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Kylie and you are with Kylie Nichols. And we are back today, ready to talk. It feels like so much can happen in a week or a day or like an hour these days. I know all of you know what I'm talking about. It is the fastest changing times of all of our lives. I felt like I have ideas of what to talk about on the podcast and it just is, none of those are relevant right now. Everything really is just on pause and all of us really are just talking about one thing and that's um, obviously COVID-19 and the virus and all of the kind of changes that are up in the air at the moment. And so it really felt irrelevant to be talking about anything but that. So, um, but really what I think the overarching kind of thing that we're all going through is just the uncertain and unexpected. Uh, Everything feels so uncertain, so unexpected, so kind of uh, different than we're used to and outside the norm. So I thought that's probably more what I wanted to talk about today. And so as a business owner, as a mom, as just a human being, I'm kind of dealing with all this too. And how am I dealing with it? How am I coping and handling? I thought this is probably what I want to talk about today. And maybe I'll learn a little bit as I go through my thoughts with you guys and share. And maybe my experience can help uh, someone else as well. So that is going to be today. And so what I wanted to kind of go back a little ways and say that as a business owner, we've actually been dealing with COVID-19 for months now um, in different ways than, than, you know, illness or fear of kind of illness at our home. We've, um, uh, at Nickel and Suede, we have partners and vendors kind of all over the world. And so we have vendors in China, we have vendors in Italy, and we've been in contact with them since January and had delays in shipments. And we've had concerns with their health over there ever since Chinese New Year. And so I never imagined that it would really kind of go past that. Um, You know, we've been concerned about their health, but we've also just been kind of, it was just kind of a frustration And kind of a, okay, our shipments are delayed. Okay, I hope, you know, we hope they're healthy. We hope they can get back to work and they can get um, us what we need. And I never in a million years would have thought that the virus would come to our side of the world and put us in a out of work situation and such a compromising, difficult, um, put us in their shoes, really. So... We, uh, yeah, we've been expecting delays on on uh, components and on leather. Um, we've we've got a lot of partnerships in Italy, and so now we have um, just our hearts have been aching for our uh, relationship with the tanneries in Italy that those are shutting down, and it's just been so tragic to see the two places in the world that we have the biggest partnerships with. We've got people that are really hurting and are in so much danger. And um, so, yeah, so it's really been uh, affecting us uh, here at home, but also across the world in places that um, I'm surprised we have such strong relationships and such um, they're having such a hard time there. So, so yeah, I, I think I, you know, I've said before, I never expected to be the business owner and in the way that we are. And I never expected to have partnerships in these parts of the world that we're, we're having such a hard time. But um, so COVID-19 has touched us in, in all kinds of ways. We really, we really never thought we've had products that haven't been able to launch the way we thought they would. And then um, 
those are delayed. And then now um, all of our team is working from home and uh, we're changing all of the way that we operate at Nicole and Suede. I know many of you are probably seeing your jobs interrupted, your husband's jobs interrupted, your kids' schooling interrupted, and that's just been really stressful for all of us. So what I wanted to say is uh, I'm with you. I get it. And it's just uh, a lot. So um, what do we do with all that? How do we handle that? How do we um, go with that? So first, I wanted to say um, I'm with you. I get it. And I, it's totally okay to feel uh, overwhelmed, sad, tired, uh, and not know what to do because um, none of us have ever been through before this before. This is the unknown. None of us have ever been through a pandemic before. Um, and kind of acknowledging that has helped me because um, every time that I have done something I've never done before, which that's been a frequent topic here on the podcast, I, that kind of gives me ability to have grace for myself and say, okay, I've never done this before what do I need to do and what do I need to learn so that I can get through it? And so um, just having that ability to have grace and say, I've never done this before. Neither has anybody else. That means we can all have grace for each other and say, this is okay. There's going to be a lot of feelings when we've never done something before. There's going to be a lot of, you know, frustration. Maybe we say something we don't mean. Maybe we are a little more irritated than we intend to be. Maybe we are losing sleep. Maybe we are a little bit more scared. And so we act in ways we didn't mean to. So just having a lot more grace for everybody. Um, so just have a cry, have a cookie, have a Diet Coke, go for a run, make sure you're drinking water, uh, get that exercise, have your long shower. Like those things are going to be important. I realized the other day I hadn't had a cry yet. And so I was like, I haven't cried about this yet. And I've been having like a lot of stress trying to figure out what to do for my employees. What do I do for my family? And so I was eating a bowl of Frosted Flakes and I started like crying over my Frosted Flakes because I realized this t-shirt that I really was excited about releasing in April was not going to come out. And then I was like, yeah, and this whole collection that I was so happy about was coming together perfectly and it was going to be so beautiful and it's just not going to come out and dang it. And then I was cried. But I was like, yes, finally, I had my cry. This is really important. So if you haven't had your cry yet, then probably need to. Um, We all need to have cried about this at some point because we're all grieving some loss here. Um, There is a loss happening with this virus in our lives. And I definitely don't mean to lightly say that there's not like serious loss happening because there's huge losses of lives and all those things. But there's loss in jobs, there's loss in schedules, there's loss in families being together, there's loss in all kinds of things. And so um, sometimes with the stress, we maybe don't let it out, we don't have the emotions to get processed. And so um, I'm somebody that just kind of keeps going, going, going and working through it. And um, instead of just like letting the emotions out. So um I think, you know, there's so many people being brave. There's so many people working. There's uh, so many people we can appreciate that that our nurses, our doctors, our first responders, our um, politicians. And there's just so many people working so hard for their families and for our communities and, and, and all the places. And so all of us, no matter what position we're in, need to have cried through this no matter what it is because there's just so many emotions and and things so that is okay there's just we haven't been through this before so um that's just one thing through something so uncertain and unprecedented we need to have done but um but don't stay there we're not going to stay there we're not going to stay in the cry we're not going to stay in the the overwhelm because there's so many people who depend on us and there's so many people who depend on you. Um, there's so many people who depend on all of those amazing first responders and, and our politicians and our um, medical workers and, and on us as parents and as us as business owners. There's so many people who depend on us that um, that's why we get up every day and we continue on. So um, make sure that we 
acknowledge all the emotions and also that we don't stay there. We, we're going to keep going. So um, something that I've really also been focusing on through this and that I really believe in all difficulty is to just continue to look for opportunities in difficulties and in times that are hard is looking for um, opportunity and how to how to find positive even even when things feel really hard. And um, like I said, I still always you know want to acknowledge and say that there's so many things that are hard. Um, and there's so many people who are going through grieving and, and difficult through um, the illness that's happening in the world right now. But um, when there's difficulty, there's always also a chance to grow and to reset and to find places to improve. So um, as a business owner, we're, you know, I'm responsible for a lot of employees now. That's a responsibility that I took on when I started a business and I asked people to come work for me. And I take that as a like it's a blessing and a burden it's a responsibility and so trying to figure out okay how can we work smarter if I have to have my team all work from home that's hard okay how can we take that and use that to help us and even help us in the future um, if my kids are going to be doing their schooling from home how can we do we better? How can we make that stronger, us stronger as a family because of that? So just looking for opportunity and looking for ways to improve um, is something that I think is really important. Um, the next one that I, uh, the next point that I had is to stick with your long-term vision and your long-term goals, even in the unexpected. So I think in life, lots of times unexpected things will happen. Okay, that's like the understatement of the year. Unexpected things are always happening, right? Like literally you wake up every day and you're like, here's my plan for the day. And then something unexpected happens. That's the norm. Now this huge pandemic has been massively unexpected for all of us, massively and, and devastating and, and frustrating and all, all of the feelings that we talked about earlier. But um, we don't want to let that just totally stop all of our thoughts and progress and goals and and hopes and dreams for our life because then we lose hope and then we lose our ability to see past the pandemic and I think the the thing that can keep us going is hope and it is like looking past the the pandemic and saying you know what I believe that where there's more past this and so what I really want to do for my team and for my family and for me is to say I'm sticking with my long-term goals and my vision we're going to keep working towards those things so um you know for my kids we're we're making goals of you know goals for during this pandemic and after so Kessler wants to learn how to play the piano so he's been um, working on learning how to play play little things from YouTube and stuff right now during the pandemic and his time at home. And he's been having fun with that. Um, I, you know, here at Nicole and Suede, we have goals and a vision for this year. And some of those things have been knocked down a notch because of, you know, what we're missing on, you know, time this month together, but also we can keep working on those things at home. Um, we, um, Still made some are you know moving towards hiring positions that we've had um, listed this uh, last couple of months. We've had positions open that we're hiring for, and so we're still going to move on that those positions if we find the right people. Um, I just hired somebody this week, and she's working remotely, but we're going to keep onboarding her and making that happen because she was the right fit for right now. We also had to let a few people go, but that didn't have to do with a pandemic. It had to do with, do they fit with the long-term vision of where we're going as a company? And we're going to keep working towards making a long-term vision and working towards that. And um, we're working with our our coach and with our business consultant and trying to move towards, you know, what does Nickel and Suede look like in the next three years, in the next five years and keeping those goals in front of us. Um, the one example he gave us was there's a Harvard business study of Sears and Montgomery Ward. And during the Great Depression, uh, Sears advertised heavily, even though nobody could buy anything. And Montgomery Ward didn't advertise at all. And Sears is where everybody went to purchase after the Great Depression ended and everybody had money again. And Montgomery Ward 
died and went away. We're trying to just continue to move forward on all the things that are on our list of goals and things that we want to accomplish this year, whether or not the COVID-19 had happened. And some of those, you know, we're having to pivot maybe how we do that. So like our Dallas store, we really wanted to have already opened and we're still trying to hire for that. And so, you know, what can we do to make sure that that happens as soon as it possibly can? And um, so just keeping those goals in mind and then just, okay, how can we still make movement on each of those goals? And how can I still help my team members make movement on each of those goals? How can I still make movement on each of my personal goals? And I think um, just looking later on in the year and um, past this month, past next month, instead of just saying, oh, this month is going to be such a drag. I can't believe we have to just be home. It's like, okay, let's look six months out and let's just try to keep looking forward and looking ahead and keep that optimism and hope that, you know what, things are going to get better. Things are going to to move forward. So, and then that just kind of rolls me to my next point of like, I think optimism and gratitude are really what we're going to, are going to help us move forward and help us Um, taking care of each other. Um, I mentioned our vendors overseas and um, one of our vendors has been such a great example to me of taking care of each other. She um, is always checking in on us and she is constantly emailing saying, how are you guys doing? The virus was, you know, a, a scary time over here. And can we send you anything? Do you need us to send you masks? And the last thing she sent us, she said, I'm sending you 12 N95 masks. Make sure you stay inside. Be careful. And she just is always like sending just such uplifting you know, showing such concern and care for us, even though she's on the other side of the world and we've never met in person. It's just such a great like she cares about us because she knows what our situation um, could be like. And so it reminded me of like, you know, we need to care about everybody that we could possibly be reaching out to. We need to care about, you know, she's a, our vendor, which is, it's a business relationship, but like, so how much more should I be caring about my friends, my family, my, you know, everybody that I could reach out to and check in on and care about. So it, it really warmed my heart that she cared so much about me that I thought how big of a difference could, could a text or a call make. And so, um, being optimistic, being grateful, being um, that reach out person, I think is really a way that we can keep in touch those emails, those phone calls, even if we can't be close to people. Um, And then, you know, just those are the things that are going to really help us um, get through these next couple weeks and hopefully a couple months and um, find our new norm. But really, um, whether it's a gratitude journal, whether it's just showing appreciation to each other for, for the little things and um, finding that finding that new norm. So, so I think like being a mom right now has been an interesting new space for me because I think previous to being a business owner, I would have had different concerns. I don't know. It's just there's so many things that are taking my headspace right now. And I don't, it's really hard for me to represent accurately on social media. So like I tried last night to post like a, just, Hey, if you're a business owner, if you're a working mom, like here's kind of just where I'm at this week. And it was really just a picture of me sleeping. Cause it's like so exhausting right now. And like, I really want to be there to homeschool my kids right now and to be like this is a time where I want to step back into being a stay at home mom again, because like this is the time where you see on social people being like, this is where your kids will remember you being a stay at home mom and you and this is the greatest time of their lives. And yet a lot of the time I'm like, I got to be on a, a conference meeting right now. I've got to check in with my team. I have to make sure that everybody's working and getting what they need from me. And like, I'm like, this is why I had a nanny before and I like came and was working at work full time because this is that's the only way for me to to get work done. So I guess the only reason I'm sharing that is because I just feel like this is a time to be like very imperfect and that things are going to be messy. And to like I can back to that grace thing of really just doing your best and 
that it's just going to be temporary and it's a phase. And I think that that's one thing that's gotten me through motherhood, really, with young kids. And then probably being a business owner, too, is like, this is a phase. Um, It's not going to last forever. And doing your best is really what your kids are going to see, really what, you know, your team's going to see, whether you're the owner or you're on a team, like just doing your best and showing up every day with your game face on um, as best you can, because um, like I said earlier, none of us have ever done this before. And so every day I wake up and I'm like, dang it, it's not as early as I wanted it to be. And I'm not as ready as I wanted to be. And I'm not as planned out as I wanted to be. But like, um, I watched something from Simon Sinek earlier and he was like, you know, let's look at more like an infinite mindset and have it not be a today was a good day or a bad day, but maybe like I'm ahead today or I'm behind today. Like, let's look at trying to get ahead or maybe today I'm feeling a little behind and that that's a way, you know, a much more positive way to look at it. And so I think that's maybe going to help me as a mom is if I'm just like, OK, am I feeling ahead right now? How, what can I do to get ahead? For, and, you know, I'm feeling behind right now and that um, that's probably going to be the way that I approach this because, Um, as a mom, as a person, like there's just, this is going to be a new frontier. So we're going to try to make it happen. So one of my favorite books that I haven't read in forever. So, uh, don't hate me if I quote it wrong, but, um, it's the hiding place by Corey Ten Bloom. And she is such an inspiration of going through a really difficult time. Um, I need to read it again because it probably would help me right now. But I just remember she had such an amazing attitude of gratitude and that, um, I know someone quoted her the other day saying that she just, she was grateful even for the fleas because it kept the soldiers out of their, Um, space and allowed them to have their Bible study and that you know if she could be grateful for the fleas like we can find things to be grateful for in our lives and that gratitude and looking for positive is really um, how we can make the best out of like really unexpected and uncertain times and so um, it's just I feel like myself my team my family like we just keep saying like there's a silver lining there's a silver lining like we're just going to keep looking for silver linings and that they're always there to be found so I just want to really recommend and encourage you and um, you know today like I said we talked about that it's okay to be overwhelmed it's okay to be sad or tired we've never been through this before Um, Look for opportunities when it's difficult. Stick with your long-term goals and visions um, and find some optimism and gratitude and we'll make it through. So I want to offer that encouragement. I hope that you're doing okay. Stay healthy, stay well, and um, I will be back next week. And I hope that you can find some joy this week. So thanks so much. Thanks for listening today to With Kylie Nichols. Stay tuned next week for another episode. And if you can't wait until then, you can find me at onelittlemama.com, M-O-M-M-A, for beauty, our family, style tips, and more. And you can find my business at nicholandswade.com with the and spelled out. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.